Thanks everyone, uh, and thanks Mike. I'm, I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you guys about uh, the AIR SDK and the things that we've been working on and showcase some of the stuff that third-party developers uh, have been working on and using already. So one of the things that you, know, you may uh, want to consider when you're, when you're developing for a new platform like the Playbook is you know, to really understand what the UI metaphors are, what the design patterns are that we've introduced uh, on the device. This will go a long way in making sure that you, know, you provide a really great user experience to, your, uh, to the users of your application, as well it will provide some sort of familiarity the first time a user uh, you know, downloads your application and starts to use it. So I, I want to show you guys a, a little, uh, a few of the things that you can start to think about when you're designing and, and developing your applications. So you may have seen uh, Mike do you know, some really quick gestures, and uh, once you guys get a chance to have a look and, and play with these, you'll, you'll notice quickly that there aren't a lot of uh, hard or soft buttons on the device. So we, there's a few at the top, you know, mostly power and volume controls and things like that. But where you know, other platforms may have a, a home or a, or a back button, uh, we have uh, a black bezel all the way around the screen. And this black bezel is all touch sensitive, which allows you to navigate uh, around the device. So we'll just have a, a quick look at, at what some of this does. So I'm going to launch the music application. And you, know, you can see right away that all of our applications launch up in full screen. So there's no status bar, and, and it kind of hides the rest of the device. And so if I started to play a, a music uh, or a song on my playlist, chances are I don't need to interact with the device uh, anymore, or this music application any, any longer. So chances are you know, I probably want to go and you know, maybe look at pictures or look at uh, a website. And so in order to do that, I need to you know, go back to the home screen and, and minimize this application. So in order to do that, we simply uh, interact with the bottom bezel. And so you place your finger on the bottom bezel like so and just literally swipe up from the bottom. And so this minimizes the application and reveals the home screen so that you guys can you know, select another application. So now I have my applications up here like in the app tray that are, are, are still alive and, and running in the background. And I can launch the photo application. And so I can go into the photo application and, and, and check out some photos. And like Mike showed earlier, you can easily swipe left to go back to your to music application. Maybe a song came on that you didn't like uh, and you wanted to switch the song while you're, while you're viewing the pictures. And then once you select a new song, you can swipe back to the photos and can continue browsing. So these are you know, three system level gestures that get recognized by the, by the platform and control uh, applications. The top bar is what we use uh, for, for in-app gestures. So you can actually use uh, the swipe down at the top, so placing your finger on the top of the bezel and, and swiping down, and your application can detect this swipe. And so, you're able to, to show content uh, when, and reflect when that uh, top swipe occurs. So we use the top swipe for a couple different things. Uh, one, you can see here, we use it for the parent navigation. So I'm in the All Photos uh, album. And I can see at the top, I have up here, all of my albums that I can switch and easily toggle to. So I can go to travel, and I can go to family, and uh, you know, I, can, I can select in here, and it, it goes away, and I can launch a, a picture. Now that I'm in uh, a, a different album, you know, I may want to toggle in between pictures within that album. So what I can do is I can go to the top swipe again, and the top bar has now changed to you know, all, the, all the pictures within that album, so I can easily jump around and preview different, different images in that, in that album. One of the other things that we use a top swipe for is settings. So settings are, are really good for you know, to be hidden. It's, it's something that you would you know, select once and set once and then forget about it. Really trying to keep your, your user immersed in the, in the task at hand. 
you know, don't confuse them or, or distract them with a lot of UI elements on the screen that they don't need to interact with a, a whole lot. So I'm going to bring up the, the camera app again and show you an example of, of what those settings are. We'll just turn on the front camera so we can see. And you can see here in the camera, we actually use all of the, the top and, uh, for scene modes. So you can set scene modes and toggle in between them. It will be reflected in the camera and then you can close it and continue to take pictures or video. So it, that's a, it's a really good example of something that we use for you know, hiding controls, you know, things that don't need to be on the screen at all times. So those are just some of the things that you can, you can take advantage of, um, you know, things to think about while you're developing your applications. Uh, one of the other things that you can uh, you know, see is to minimize an application or close it, you can actually swipe up on top of the uh, app that is run, running on the, in the system tray. So we're just going to close that. So what I wanted to show you guys is you know, some, of the, some of the things that third-party developers are doing uh, and, and leveraging the Air SDK that is, is currently available to um, develop applications. So one of the applications uh, is this ATP application, which is built by Digitaria uh, out of San Diego, and it tracks the progress of the ATP tennis tour uh, throughout the year. So we can see different players and their rankings, and you can click on them and view their bios. We can view tournament information. So if there's a, if there's a specific tournament that you, that you want to look at, you can, you can go in and, and look at those. You can also get live score updates. So if there's a tournament going on and matches going on, you can actually get real-time updates inside the application and, and follow what's going on if you, you know, aren't by your TV and, and able to watch it. So the, the great thing about this was is that Digitaria actually had built this for a different platform. Uh, they, they built this originally for the desktop, and with very little effort, they were able to convert this, you know, tweak, this, tweak some of the layout, you know, adjust the screen size and, and the size of the application, and deploy it to uh, the playbook using our Air SDK. And so, and I want to show you one more game here. And so this one is a portrait game. And so you can see here, it's kind of a Frogger style game, where I have controls down along the bottom here. And I am not very good at this game, so uh, we'll give it a try. You can see this is all built using Flash and Air. Oh, I died. <laughs> but uh, you can see the performance is really great. Uh, and this is built by a, a developer out of New York called Jesse Freeman. And the great thing about this is, is he's, he developed this for a bunch of different platforms as well. And as we are in our uh, developer day in New York City, he actually ported it to the playbook during that day-long session. So it was really good to see, to see him show up there at the beginning of the day, not have anything, and then have it running in the simulator by the end of the day. So it was, it was really great to see. And the great thing about this is that all the code is up and available on his github.com site. So if you go searching for Jesse Freeman on github.com or uh, Code Bummer, you should be able to find this game. And if you're new to uh, Flash and Air, hopefully you'll be able to take some things away from it and, and learn a few things uh, from his code. So, let's close that. So, I am really excited to, to be here today uh, to you know, sh talk to you about all the great work that we're doing and to announce that we've actually released today a new version of the Air SDK uh, 0.9.2. So you can go on blackberry.com uh, today and, and download that. And we've been working really hard on some really great new features that we've released in this SDK. So if we take a look at some of those features, uh, we've implemented custom application splash screens. So uh, you'll, you'll be able to customize your splash screen, bundle it with your application, and have it shown as your application starts up. We've also uh, redone the entire look of our UI components, so we have entirely new skins for our components. 
Uh, if you developed or, or downloaded the previous versions of the SDK, uh, when you download the new ones, you'll definitely see a, a change in those. In the simulator, we've also released a new simulator, and we've actually enabled the ability to uh, put the simulator into portrait mode. So you're actually able to, on the fly, rotate the simulator uh, into portrait mode and have your applications relay out in a different aspect ratio so you can you know, make sure that your applications are laying out correctly and, and sizing correctly and flowing correctly. And as well, we've, we've added the uh, BlackBerry app and app uh, payment APIs for Air. So we saw Tyler talk about those a little bit earlier, and we've enabled those APIs that, so you can start testing out uh, in-app payments in your Air applications. So let's have a look at what some of those uh, features look like. So one application we have here is developed by uh, IO Festival, which is a festival happening in, in June in Minneapolis. And you can see it has a custom splash screen to it. And the great thing about this is it, it just provides a, an extra level of polish to your application. You know, what, you, what you're able to do is embed that splash screen as well inside of your application. So you, the transition is seamless. What you saw there is um, the, all the content was loaded in the background. So the splash screen internally was removed from the application and hidden from the application once all the content was downloaded. <coughs> and ready to be seen. So we saw you know, a, a seamless performance on, on getting that through. Let's have a look at some of the components as well. So here's a, a, a small section of the components uh, that we have. You know, some different types of buttons and, and scrolling lists. Uh, we've got drop downs and, and pickers. And so this is uh, the uh, black version uh, or, or the dark theme of our component set. And we also have a white version as well. And so, you see it looks very similar, just a little bit lighter theme, uh, so that, you know, it's, it's flexible uh, in making, making sure that your applications can look, you know, like, uh, like you want them to. And it will fit into, you know, potentially your branding and, and how you want your application to look. So, you know, make sure if, if you've downloaded uh, the SDK and are, are building your applications, get the new SDK and, and recompile your applications. There may be, you know, some tweaking involved that you may have to, have to do based on the new skins, uh, but it should be, we've worked really hard to make sure that it's minimal effort for you. So, with that, um, I just want to say thanks very much. You can go now to blackberry.com slash developers and download it uh, today, and uh, you know, really excited to see what kind of apps you guys can can develop. 